Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 10th, 2020. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness, what a day we had yesterday. Um, we are looking at a possible turnaround Tuesday here. So let's uh, grab something to drink, settle in, and let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the morning market prep video. So this yesterday, obviously, um, lots and lots of pain in the market, closing uh, near the lows of the day, um, rapid selling, um, ugly gap down, tremendous price action whip. Um, if you're an option trader, the options were just ridiculously wide bid ass spreads yesterday as market makers were working to protect themselves from this wild volatility. And now we have um, a market that I think we may have reached that uh, point of capitulation, but we still have an awful lot to deal with here in the market. Now, after the bell yesterday, the president came out and announced that he is proposing a tax cut to help folks dealing with the uh, impacts of the coronavirus. And um, the market seems to be happy about that this morning. If we take a look, um, we're, we're looking at a substantial gap up here this morning. Um, as you can see, this right here, we're getting that substantial gap up here this morning. So we'll want to keep an eye on that pretty closely um, as we move higher here in these charts. But boy, we have a lot of work yet to do. And one of the things we're going to have to plan for is we're going to have to plan for um, lots of price volatility to continue. This gap back up is a big deal. It's going to anyone still holding short positions is going to feel a lot of pain this morning in this gap up. And notice we have price resistance coming in the chart right through here. We have price resistance up through here that we will have to pay attention to. Let's take a look at some moving averages. You can see we're, we are substantially below our um, 500 day moving average. And if I stick a line on here, you can see a rally back into here. There's some price resistance right in here. That's where we're gapping up to this morning. Little bit of price resistance. If we can break on through there, watch this next level right in here of that price resistance to deal with. Keep in mind, we've got a big road to come back up to pick up that uh, 500 day moving average. So lots and lots of work here to do. At the close of the day, we ended up our indexes down about 19% overall from the record highs here, putting us very near that bear market territory. And one of the things we're going to have to remember, I know it's hard to it's hard to even think about these kind of things, but when we get sell-offs like this, um, strong sell-offs, we have to keep in mind that it is not uncommon um, after a relief rally at some point in time that we retest that low. So keep that in mind. Um, the virus situation is not getting better. It's getting worse here in the United States. And um, that nervous market could still see those big bearish reactions to the downside. So as much as I hate to hate to report that, everyone has to keep that in mind that we may not be done with these big uh, bearish swings that can come even after big bullish moves up in the market. Now, if the if the government continues to or does actually move forward and pass a, uh, a substantial tax cut, um, uh, more uh, federal intervention, things like that, we may see this um, rally continue to improve for a while. But just remember, a test back down is pretty common. And even if we don't go all the way back down, if we were to bounce and then pull back partially, it could still be kind of a rough, um, rough move if you're hoping to pick up some of those value stocks um, in this sell-off. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, pretty brutal here on its sell-off. And as you can see, we've dropped, um, dropped well below um, um, that 500 day moving average into this support level. And now we're bouncing back up and you can see this morning, 
looking for a gap back up right up here toward that 500 day moving average. So keep that in mind, that could serve as resistance here in the chart. We have price resistance right over here that we're going to have to deal with as we start coming back up, let alone this price action in here. The volatility of the market could certainly swing us around substantially, but we're gonna have to be quite careful with this these moves because they will be likely quite erratic in their price moves lots of price whip intraday and then holding things overnight is going to be very difficult because we can probably expect very substantial um, overnight gaps in both up or down to uh, affect traders that hold anything overnight so watch that closely plan carefully let's take a look at the cues QQQ um, broke down below its 200 day moving average. This morning, this gap back up is substantial. And you can see this gap back up is pushing us back above that 200 day moving average, trying to hold it as support. But let's note there's some price resistance right here in this chart, right around that area. So we'll wanna watch that close as we try to rally we could hit those resistance points and cause some significant turmoil in the price action so watch that close we're not out of the woods here yet i'd like to be able to report hey the virus situation is getting better but it's certainly not as a matter of fact over in italy last night they extended their lockdown essentially a countrywide quarantine um uh, with uh leadership there asking people to just stay home um, that's um, that's amazing um, to see a countrywide situation going on there as their death toll continues to rise above 450 um, at this point and uh, that virus is certainly a tenacious thing continuing to spread over there so we want to wish everyone over in those countries the best but we also have to worry about the potential impacts here and that's one of the things I, I also want to mention is even though we're seeing all of this turmoil and, and selling and things going on in the market we have yet to experience the impacts in the company reports of this uh, virus so just keep in mind as we move forward and we start getting company reports and the impacts that these companies will suffer as a result could be substantial um, this may take a while and there are quite a few folks out there uh, thinking that um, this virus will actually push us into a worldwide recession so Kind of keep that in mind we're we're not done and and don't assume that we're going to see a complete v bottom reversal back up even with a tremendous amount of federal government intervention they cannot cure the virus so um, as these impacts continue to spread out um, just remember we've got a long way to go here on um, on this recovery let's take a look at iwm iwm poof Holy moly, this thing just cavitated yesterday, closing at its lows breaking substantially lower didn't make it down here and I was wondering if we would make it down to that 2018 low but um, didn't quite make it there and as you can see um, we're gapping up substantially here this morning on IWM looking for that little bit of relief rally recovery on the back of the proposed tax cut by the way proposed tax cut no no telling whether congress is actually going to support that at least at the moment let's take a look at um the vix now the vix shooting up here as you can see we we ran up really really high uh breaking into this 50 delta or 50 handle um on the vix we could still move substantially higher yet notice we've um, had periods of time 2008 2009 we reached all the way up here into that 80 handle hopefully we don't see that at least um uh, for a while and with this big gap up this morning I would expect a substantial pullback um, in the VIX. We'll want to watch that close. But keep an eye on any of these support levels as we pull back for that um, reemergence of fear and that potential of bearish move back down um, with these big swings that we're seeing in the market. So keep an eye on that. Um, option traders need to be very um, um, focused on this and realize that option prices are very, very expensive. And if we 
we do start a relief rally, volatility could shrink back quite a bit. That means anything that you buy um, first thing this morning could um, suffer some tremendous um, uh, pullback in that volatility and uh, creating a difficult situation to make money with an option. You can be exactly right on direction, but if you get a volatility crush, um, almost impossible to make money um, on some directional trades. So be very, very careful with that this morning. Let's take a look at uh, T2122. T2122 has been indicating a extreme oversold condition for some time now. And you can see we're down here um, rubbing our belly on the ocean floor here, and it is about time to catch a bit of a relief rally. So this morning we're gapping up substantially. We can expect this to zoom up here pretty fast uh, this morning. Um, we'll want to watch as we reach those resistance levels and charts, um, but we are certainly showing that bearish reversal is um, due now, and as a matter of fact, a little bit overdue and a little bit of relief to the upside. So some good news there. Let's take a look at our economic calendar today. And our economic calendar has very little um, going on here. Um, nothing that's really likely to move the market around. As you can see, we have small business optimism. We have some bond announcements and auctions and not much happening here on the economic calendar to move us around. Tomorrow will be kind of an important day with the CPI and it'll be interesting to see if any of this virus stuff is starting to trickle in to some of these numbers. Right now, analysts um, or um, the estimates are holding up really, really well. So hopefully we'll continue to show that good, strong economy in those numbers, but we'll want to start watching that carefully and closely because it could start trickling in at any time. So um, on the earnings front today, we have um, about 100 companies reporting earnings. And um, of those earnings reports, you know, I, I just, there's nothing that would be um, what I would say market moving, um, even in some of the notables. Um, uh, Casey uh, reporting earnings today. Um, real wide bid ask spread right now. No earnings report there. Um, SOHU reporting earnings today. Looks like they're catching a little gap up this morning. Um, SFIX will be reporting a big wide bid ask spread. Oh no, they're gapping substantially lower here. Looks like they missed badly here this morning. So um, MTN. So a few companies like this reporting looks like they're gapping lower as well. But I wouldn't expect them to be uh, big market movers today. As a matter of fact, the um, market seems to be pretty dead set for a substantial rise this morning. And um, if the bulls um, start stepping in, um, we could really get that short squeeze. Anyone that's still caught short in this will be forced at the open to close those short trades, squeezing um, uh, prices higher here. So we could see market rip substantially higher here this morning, um, whether or not it can recover 2,000 points. Um, uh, that's yet to be seen, but we've got um, a big rally underway this morning that could um, extend just a little bit further after the market opens. So kind of keep that in mind. We've got a little bit of relief coming in and um, a lot of volatility to be thinking about. So with that, everyone, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please do me a favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that uh, bell icon so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. I would certainly appreciate that. And um, if if you find these videos to be helpful, if you could also do me a favor and click that uh, thumbs up button and leave a comment, um, that uh, is something I truly, truly appreciate as well. It keeps helps us to continue to grow. Um, it's It's a it's quite a little bit of an effort to put out a video every single day uh, for the market. And um, the kindness that you guys are showing me and the appreciation that you're showing in those comments, um, honestly, humbles me a lot. I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much for those who do that. And um, it, really, it really does make a difference. Thank you very much. So with that, let's take a look at some, some things that we might be able to look at for potential 
um, trades, but things we're going to have to be really, really careful on because of the volatility of the market. Now, one of the first things I want to show you this morning is how I will be treating some of this rebound if we start coming back up. First thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at very substantial companies, companies that I know um, are just going to be around forever. They're very, very strong companies, um, lots of capital. Um, they're in pretty good shape. So take a look at a stock like Microsoft. When we when we take a look at a stock like Microsoft, obviously extremely punished here in its move down. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start looking at intraday charts. So for example, I might look at a 15 minute and look for an early entry into a trade. So what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for a break of the downtrend. Whenever I see those downtrend breaks, that's going to be very, very important. Next thing I'm going to be looking for is after we break that downtrend, I want to see proof that we are actually going to hold that downtrend or support levels in the chart. If I don't see that, it's still not a buy for me. Now, keep in mind, a 15 minute a chart is very very early and a 15 minute chart you're going to have to stay really on top of those trades now what if you move to a, let's say an hourly chart we want to look at the same thing we want to take a look at those big downtrends that are in play here and we're going to want to see those prices breaking through those downtrends proving to hold support before we start jumping into those trades we've seen so many times here and just recently where we catch this relief rally and everybody jumps in and thinking oh my gosh it's time to time to hop on the train and we slam this thing right back down we don't want to be caught in those uh, kind of moves we want to wait for those downtrends to be broken so pick a time frame that you're interested in trading to try and catch some of those recovery trades I would really probably stick to the kind the stocks that are very strong companies. Um, a, a place to look is uh, companies that have good strong dividends because those will be the kind of places that people will run first. Um, there's still that, that certainty of that dividend coming through and folks will be looking for some of that comfort in trades like that. So look for some of those nice little patterns in trades. We need to see that recovery. Now, Keep in mind, I, I know a lot of folks out there want to try and pick a bottom, and, and you can certainly try to do that, but I want you to understand that trying to pick that bottom is nothing more than a gamble. Institutions are, without institutional support, these big companies cannot sustain a rally. So we need to see those institutions stepping up, proving their support of these prices. Then we have that comfort level to get in. And as retail traders, that's really all we can do. Retail traders cannot move the market. We don't have the power to do that. We're like a little flea on the hind end of an elephant trying to, uh, if we believe we can move that, um, we're just fooling ourselves. So what we need to do is be waiting for those institutions to start showing us the proof of these moves so that we can make good quality trades in there. Now, I'm not saying that you can't just gamble a little bit and say, hey, I, I, I'm planning to buy Microsoft or, or John Deere or uh, whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, um, and, and just risk a little capital that this is going to be the bottom. But if that's the case, you have to be willing to hold through some pretty substantial pullbacks um, as that occurs. As a matter of fact, as I'm watching the futures right now, we have just dropped um, almost 200 points. Um, in the futures while I've been explaining this on Microsoft. So I don't know what just happened here, but a little bit of rolling around in those prices, we can expect really whippy price action. And that's why we have to have a good quality plan as to how we're going to trade these so we can um, follow through and maintain um, um, a tolerance to risk um, on these type of trades. So take that into note. There's gonna be a lot of those charts maybe starting to show those signs. We have been tremendously uh, beat up in um, 
in the financial sector. Um, JP Morgan, oh my gosh, this is just um, horrific um, with JP Morgan. I do expect the financial sector to come back, but we don't know how much impact there will be to these banks um, with um, with um, you know bad loans and things starting to come through with these business impacts. So we'll want to watch those closely. There could be some substantial whip in those, but I have to believe these stocks are going to start coming back and there could be some really good value opportunities in some of these stocks. So as long as you're willing to hold through the volatility, there can be some great opportunities. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a great turnaround Tuesday. Take care of yourselves be safe protect your capital and we'll see you all right back here bright and early wednesday morning have a good one everyone